Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to put three different rainbows on one card. And I'm not talking rainbows in the sky, but rainbows for coloring objects or design portions on a card. And first I sat down to do something I've been wanting to do for a long time, which is write down my favorite colors for rainbows. Because sometimes I just decide I want to do something with rainbow colors and I have to go figure it out all again and see which ones blend together with which ones. And what I did here was pick ones that, for the most part, they have a three, four, or five as the second number. There's some that are a little odd. There's a, a two in there, and there's a Y17 because it has to be in every rainbow. But that puts them all in the middle range, for the most part, of the colors. And there's, aside from the outlayers, it at least assures that you're not blending a really dark color with a really light color. Yellow is always going to be hard because yellow is so light compared to other colors. But you can always just go back and forth to get some blending going between some of the colors. When you get to the bottom of the rainbow, it's supposed to be indigo and then violet. But I just kind of put violet down there. And then I add an RV, which is going to also work at the top end of the rainbow. So you take that same red violet if you were going to continue the rainbow the other direction. And it will join up with your red. So for the most part, this is a pretty decent rainbow order. I'm going to tuck that little slip in my bag. And now I'm going to start applying the rainbows to a card. I have this little set of koalas from Art Impressions, and I thought I would make the teacups rainbow. I started out the wrong way. And you'll see as I get further with this, I'm not going to show you the whole coloring because it did come out badly. Even though the rainbow is really pretty going this direction on the cups, you won't be able to really see by the end of this that it's cups. It just totally lost all coherence because there's so much going on. Maybe if you used wider strips of color, that would help. I was really hoping this was going to work. But then when I added also rainbows into the streamers on it and the little confetti, it became a real cacophony. You'll see this image finished at the end and you'll know why it was so bad. But what I decided to do instead was do it again and do the rainbow horizontally and only select a portion of the rainbow for this. And I'm going to take just the warm colors. And warm colors are things like, you know, reds, oranges, yellows, things on that side of the, the spectrum. Think of sunshine, like things that feel warm. The cool colors are going to be greens and blues and purples. Think of cold water. And that's kind of the basic division of colors. But for the cups, I decided I was just going to use the warm colors. And then on one side, it goes all the way to red. On the other side, it only goes to orange. And for all the parts associated with the teacups, I'm going to continue to use the warm colors, the saucer and the handles. And then those little scallops on the top of the teacups and things, because that's going to give each one of those shapes a little bit of unity because there's not so many colors in it. And here you can already tell the teacups are taking form a lot better than they did in the previous one because they're, they're just much more co coherent in their color. These colors are also analogous colors. And analogous colors are ones that are next to each other on the, the rainbow or in the color wheel, which the color wheel is basically a round rainbow. And then for the other portions of this, all of the the little confetti and that kind of stuff, the streamers, that's all going to be the cool colors. So I'm going to use the greens and the blues and the purples and that kind of thing in order to differentiate that from the cups. And now you can see the cups are actually standing on their own. They actually look like cups. The shapes haven't completely disappeared. So sometimes I recolor things because I've made a wrong choice in the colors and the way to apply them. So don't feel bad if you end up screwing something up because I have later on in this video, I'll show you a way to use that piece of paper, even though that other one came out really terribly. I have decided to add a little extra shadow, a little dark shadow to match the nose color because that gives a little more heft to the image and it kind of doesn't look like his nose is the only big dark thing in the picture. Something that worked really well on this card is the balance between all that color in the cups and in the confetti and the streamers with the neutrals that are in the shadow and in the koala. 
So those two balance out really nicely in an image like this so that your eye doesn't get overwhelmed. Now I'm going to add another rainbow in this next part by cutting out the essential ovals shape around this. Picked one that was sized right and taped it down to run through my die cutter. And it gave me a frame. In addition to having the oval piece for the image and then the outside frame, now I've got a shape I can color on. So I'm going to use the same rainbow colors. You can start anywhere in the rainbow. Your first color to put down can be green if that's your favorite color. Mine is yellow, so lots of my rainbows start with yellow, even though you're supposed to quote unquote start with red to do it officially. But you know, whatever, whatever works is whatever's good. So I'm going to color this up and it's going to give me a really nice elegant element to this because it's a nice thin border. And when you see it on the card, you're going to be tickled pink by it because you think it's really, really a nice addition to this. So I'm going to turn the dies upside down and twist it a little bit to make it nest in just perfectly, let it find its spot. And do the same thing with the main colored panel with the koala on it. And then tape it down. Just use some scotch tape on the back so that it stays together while I assemble everything. And I thought it would be nice to add another element to this of rainbow by putting some rainbow around the outside edge. And guess what? This image almost made it into the garbage bin. So I pulled it back out and started coloring the rainbow around the edge of this. This means I have a piece of paper I can treat as designer paper on a card. You can do this with anything. It doesn't have to be with this rainbow, but if you've got a scrap of something where you tried some coloring and it didn't quite work out, then go ahead and use the outside of it. Nobody's gonna peel your card apart and look underneath unless you just don't add good adhesive. You need it to stay together so they don't know that you did this on their card, but it's a great way to use up things that didn't work out as well as get something that's very coordinated on the card itself. So I put some dimensional adhesive on the front panel, added it onto this, and then I trimmed that down so that the outside border is just as thin as the inside oval. And that gave me a nice white outline around the outside edge, which was super spectacular. I think it looks really classy this way. And I also now have a cheat sheet that I can tuck into my Copic bag with all my favorite rainbow colors on it. So you might want to make one of those too. So it's handy for you anytime you need a rainbow selection of colors. And if you want to make more rainbows, I have a whole post on my blog full of more and more and more rainbow inspiration. So check that out. Link in the doobly-doo. To that as well as all the supplies needed for today's card and i'll see you again soon be sure to hit the like button before you leave share it with a friend subscribe if you haven't and i will see you again in a couple days with more creativity